probably remember those warning labels on the first microwave ovens telling heart patients how the frequencies could interrupt with their pacemaker's function. Today, advancements in pacemakers have put most of those fears to rest. And unlike the pacemakers of years past, today's devices are smaller, easier to place, and easier to maintain. Along with pacemakers, here's some news about how advances have been made in the use of defibrillators in what the American College of Cardiology now recognizes as device therapy management for heart patients. So just uh, sit down. A defibrillator is what Abel Reese depends on to keep pace with the sport he loves to coach. He's going to talk to you. Cheering his team while out on the diamond is something Abel thought he would never do again. It's a wake-up call, big one. At age 34, an unknown virus attacked Abel's heart. His lungs filled with fluid, and even a short walk across the room became too difficult. He was suffering from congestive heart failure. They put me on a list for a heart transplant. But um, I couldn't see myself with a heart transplant. For two years, Abel and his family struggled with what had happened. It was Fresno cardiologist Dr. Rohit Sundrani who offered Abel a second solution. In the last five years, the technology has done very well. The size has gone down. Um, the electrical wire sizes have gone down. So uh, we don't use too much dissection. We don't have to worry about local, co local complications of putting it in. Uh, we are also giving it for people who have heart failure. So if they have weak heart, so we can put an extra wire, which is called a biventricular defibrillator or pacemaker, which is an extra, instead of usually two wires, we'll have three wires, and the third wire helps to squeeze the heart. Dr. Sundrani used device therapy to treat Abel's failing heart. I didn't even hesitate. I said, you know what, let's do it. At the Fresno Heart and Surgical Hospital, Dr. Sundrani implanted a defibrillator into Abel's chest. Probably about a week after they installed it, I felt good. I felt great. I felt like a 20-year-old again. Doctors began using pacemakers to replace what the body's own natural pacemaker often fails to do as it ages. Pacemakers are treatment for slow heart rate and heart stopping and heart upper and lower chambers not communicating for certain reasons. These battery-powered devices are easily replaced every five to seven years. The misconception about the pacemaker is that the pacemaker resolve all your issues about the heart rhythm. They don't. Uh, they are not given to treat your faster heart rate. It is an answer for people who are passing out with these slow heart rates or heart stopping. So uh, what we call that as a sick sinus syndrome. Since the 1960s, as technology advanced, doctors began to use defibrillators to treat other types of heart problems. The technology has grown quite a bit. Uh, the devices are smaller. The wires are lo lasting longer. They're smaller. Um, the risk of the procedure is less than 1%, uh, even 0.5%. Doctors use defibrillators, which always have pacemakers built into them, to keep a heart from beating too fast. The smaller implantable devices work in the same way as the large paddle external defibrillators, using electronic impulses to shock the heart back into a normal rhythm. During this process, the internal pacemaker works as a precaution to keep the heart from slowing too much or from stopping altogether. It is like having a paramedic with you every time. Through a small incision in the patient's chest, doctors place either a pacemaker or a defibrillator under the pectoral muscle. The wires lead to the patient's heart. The number of wires used depends on the patient's condition. Patients are only mildly sedated and are usually allowed home the next day. So you cannot get an MRI done when you have a pacemaker, so that's the precaution which holds true for now. When you're going out uh, uh, at the airport that people ask you all the time, you say you have a pacemaker because of the magnetic field they may be ex exposing you to, so they need to understand that. So those are the only main precautions. I mean, after the first initial five or seven days, about two weeks, the leads get stuck into the heart, then you can do whatever you want. Patients may have to follow a prescribed diet and take medications. They also have to check in regularly with their doctor to make sure their device is keeping their heart functioning as it should. You look good for 42. With the pacemaker, I feel great. Two years after his surgery, Abel remains committed to doing his part to stay on top no, of his condition. He follows up. a strict diet, 
takes his medications, and is once again active with his family. It changed my life around 100%. While he's grateful to be alive, his emotions leave him speechless as he thinks back to what he and his family have had to face. We were surprised, you know, it happened to our dad, you know, my husband. So we were, we were like in a standstill moment. Not able to do a lot of things that he couldn't do before. You know, he's, before he couldn't, even get, he couldn't even go outside. You know, the air, the sun, the medication that he was taking. You know, it would, he couldn't be on the sun so long. It, just those little things were taking him away from us. But now he's able to do all those things. I mean, other than like hard labor and work. But, I mean, he's strong. He's strong. I'm very proud of you. Thank you. Strong indeed, and we're very happy Abel is back active and enjoying life with his loving family. For more information, log on to our website. It's medwatchtoday.com.